Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again, and welcome to another video here at Wild Moon Lacquer. In today's video, we are getting started on this huge 2000 plus bottle haul that I have for you guys. So far, the winning suggestion is tote by tote. As you can see, I've got two of the fur babies joining me, Olivia and Willa. I am on the floor, so you're probably going to see a lot of cat interactions coming to see what I am doing. So in any case, we are actually out in my living room this time. That's where the six totes that I got from that Facebook Marketplace haul are located currently. And, and I thought for this long of a video, it would feel nice to sit down and film like I used to do in the beginning of my channel. So we're going to start with one of the initial 100 bottle bags. That was one of the initial listings that I saw on Facebook Marketplace. This is the one that you saw in my little preview video that has the NFUO bottles in it. I believe there's just two, but I am thrilled nonetheless. That is one of those brands that when it was still available, I only bought one from and I have been kicking myself ever since. So we're going to open up this bag and see what we have. This is one of the bags that has a lot of colors by LaRoe. I see some fancy gloss, an OPI. So we're going to see a lot of random bottles in this one. I'm really curious to see what all else we're going to see. That looks like a vapid. I'm not sure if we're going to get through all 100 bottles because usually I break up my mystery bags into about 40 to 50 because even that is like a 45 minute video. If I can, it'd be great to do 100 bottles in each video because even at 100 bottles, this is going to be about 200 videos. If my math is right. That's a lot of videos. So we need to get going. Uh, Olivia already wants to know what's in the bag as well. So let's see. This was originally the second lot that was listed. There were four of them originally. If you missed my preview video, basically what this is, is I found these listings of 100 indie bottles or 100 bottles of nail polish, a lot of which are indies, listed on Facebook Marketplace for $25 per lot of 100 already an incredible bargain. They did say also that they had quite a lot more available. So I contacted them and they said that they had thousands of bottles available. So <laughs> the nail polish collector and addict in me was like, what is this? How can I get a hold of all of these amazing bottles? So I asked them how much they would want for everything. And we ended up on $400, which is a chunk of change in one fell swoop. But at the same time, once you break that down across over 2000 bottles, it is a bargain. I was thrilled to pieces with that and they were happy to see these go. Uh, short of the story is it seems that this was somewhat of an estate find that was basically going to get tossed in the garbage and these people rescued them from the garbage, but then found that it was a bit of a huge undertaking to get these listed and sold and nail polish was not exactly their forte. So they were happy to see these go. And I am happy, <laughs> as you guys no doubt know, to see these and go through them. So we're just gonna, without further ado, get started on this. So right away, we're just gonna look at the one of the first NFUO bottles. This one is one of their holographic formulas. This one is NFU number 62. From what I know of these, none of them are named. They are just numbered. But look at the hollow on this one. It is like a blushy nude pink and the hollow on this one is spectacular. I mean, look at those rainbows. Of course, then we have the very unique bottles that NFUO had. I believe this was a French brand. Yeah, made in France. So I only bought one bottle from this company when it was still available and I really wish that I'd gotten more because they had some amazing flaky polishes. I think the hollow was freaking my camera out. They had amazing flaky polishes as well and I do have a purple one and it is among my favorite polishes. So that first one is definitely going in the collection. That was NFUO number 62. And I will try to say as we go, um, as I usually do with my mystery boxes and try to say which ones I'm keeping, which ones if I run across any that I already own that are going to go in the D stash and all of that stuff. A lot of these I get the feeling are going to be going into the collection. Olivia is already trying to play <laughs> with my bottles. <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> Uh, but some, I mean, with this many polishes, the likelihood is I will probably run across some that I already own. But in any case, all right, the second one is a vapid. This one is called Pessimist. And this one maybe is a black polish. Maybe this is their like basic cream black polish. 
there is on the wand. Oh, and I should say apologies about the lighting if it's not my usual. Um, I am using a completely different setup since I'm out in the living room. But yeah, this looks to be their basic black cream. Um, You've heard me say before, probably if you are not new to my channel, that black polishes are always a good staple to have in your collection. I use them for a number of things, everything from undies under sheer polishes, under flakies, under multichromes, to nail art and swatching. So I'm always in need of black nail polish. Um, at this point, I probably have more than I can use ever, but I'm always curious to try out different brands and their formulas. And Vapid probably has a pretty good formula. I'm curious if this is a one or two coater. So we're gonna at least swatch this and see. We're gonna keep it. Olivia's finally <laughs> decided she's done playing with my polish. So we're gonna put this in the keep pile for the time being. That was Vapid's Pessimist. And I should probably not spend so much time talking about each bottle, otherwise this will literally take forever. Okay. The next one is a Colors by LaRoe and it's a purple hollow. Look at this. This one is My Big Girl Panties. <laughs> this is another one that has incredible hollow. Look at that. So Colors by LaRoe is another brand that doesn't make polish anymore. I want to say this is probably one of their older labels because this is not the one that I'm familiar with. I'm more familiar with this one here, the CBL. This I think was their... Um, I'm guessing just older label. I'm not sure what year or anything, but this is one that I definitely don't have. And this hollow is spectacular. I, of course, already as a hollow lover and a purple fan have a ton of purple hollows, but I, it doesn't stop me from wanting to compare all of them and see which one I like best. There's also variations of formulas and the particle sizes and all that, but this is a beautiful one and one I don't have. So we're going to add that to the collection. So that is Colors by LaRoe, my big girl panties. Next up is another Colors by LaRoe. This looks like one of their flakies. This is called Madame Vastra. Look at this one. Wow. So this has beautiful iridescent flakies in a clear base. These go from like an orange to a peach to a gold and green. These are gorgeous. This would make a beautiful fall topper, but I could easily see this looking really nice over a bunch of other colors as well. There they are on the wand. You can see that sheer base. And sorry also if the camera starts to shake at any point, I do have it attached or clamped onto a footstool and the cats are also climbing all over that as well. So yeah, this one is definitely going in the collection as well. That's Colors by LaRoe, Madame Vastra. Next one is another CBL. This one is called They Call Me a Rockstar Charity Polish for Maggie Fornasiaro. I'm not too sure about the pronunciation, but this is a beautiful purple polish. It has iridescent flakies in there. Look at that big guy down there. Wow. So the colors on this are amazing. We've got greens, oranges, pinks, yellows popping up. That is a beautiful mix and a very nice tone of purple as well. So you guessed it. This is going in the collection as well. That is CBL or Colors by LaRoe. They call me a rock star. Next up, we have another Vapid. This one is called Afternoon Delight. This one does need a little bit of a shake. Now, they were, the sellers were kind enough to try to do as much shaking as they could, but it's a lot of work to shake 2,000 polishes. So some of these are probably going to be needing a little bit of a shake, but look at this beautiful pink. It's got a little bit of an orange or a coral lean to it, and it is a shimmer in there. I'm seeing orange and green and gold pop up. This is a beautiful one. I am curious if this is going to be a bit on the sheer side. Yeah, it might be a little bit squishy, uh, which is not surprising for this type of a polish. You want to be able to see all of the particles and whatnot, but look at that beautiful shimmer. I'll have to see how I like this one on with the peachy corally colors. I don't like them to be too sheer on my own skin tone. I find that I just don't really like how that looks, but this is a nice color and it is another one that I don't already own. So we're going to put that in the collection for the time being. We'll have to come back at some point and do some swatches and see how I like this one on, but that one was Vapid's Afternoon Delight. Okay, next up is a hair polish. So this is one of their later labels with the actual printed rabbit and hair polish. This is called the Blooming Desert. And this is one of their beautiful glitter crellies. So, or glitter jellies maybe. This one is older, so it probably needs a little bit of thinner to help it out. But 
it's still moving around in there pretty nicely. Uh, just glitter polishes in general do have a tendency of getting thicker. This one has a mix of orange, light orange, gold flakies, and white matte glitters. So a very fun and pretty unique mix. I don't think I have anything quite like this. And the base is kind of that same color as the Vapid where we've got that sort of a peachy pink base. Another very pretty color and hair polish is another one of those OG brands that stopped making polish a long time before I even discovered indie brands. So I really enjoy getting the ones that I can find because they seem to be rather hard to come by. So that one was hair polish, the blooming desert going in the collection. All right. Next up, we have another Colors by LaRoe. This one is called Midnight in Montana. Wow, look at the colors of this one. Hopefully some of the shifts are coming across on camera. I'm mainly, there we go. I'm mainly seeing the green and like blues, but you see that bright fuchsia that is popping up on the corner there. That is one of the predominant colors that I'm seeing in person. Plus there are some like micro glitters or micro flakies in here. So you've got that deeper blue that uh, shines against the green that you are seeing. This has beautiful shifts in it. And it's another one that I know I don't own. That's going to be the case for quite a lot, if not all of these older Colors by LaRoe. So we're definitely adding this to the collection. That was Colors by LaRoe Midnight in Montana. Will wants in the bedroom. We're not going in there, honey. Next up is another older Colors by LaRoe. This is called Show Off. Look at the colors on this one. So this is another multi-chrome, this time with the warmer hues. This has bronzes, oranges, golds. On camera, you're actually, wow, look at that. You're actually seeing that reddish uh, burgundy. You guys probably have not heard him before. That is Sterling, our big boy. Uh, he was a feral kitten rescue and he's always starving in case anyone asks him. But that is that burgundy shade that I'm actually not even seeing in person. So again, this kind of a shift is going to be very, very shifty in person, depending on the lighting, depending on the angle. I'm seeing a little bit of green come out there where you're seeing the gold. So this should be a beautiful one, especially for the fall season. Come on, you guys, I knew I was going to say that. So this one was Colors by LaRoe, show off. Next up is an older Vapid. Ooh, look at an around bottle. So this is Vapid's uh, No Clamshells Needed. This is a very interesting polish. Look at that. So this, I would guess, is probably closer to when they initially started because I haven't really seen glitter mixes like this from Vapid personally. Um, this is a very interesting shade. It's kind of like a grass green with a purple blue, green, and white mix of glitters. And I think there's some iridescent flakies in there as well. Hopefully some of that was in focus. Look at, you've got those bigger matte glitters. You've got some, I want to say like iridescent bar glitters as well. See that little line there? So this is definitely a very interesting polish, very unique to my collection as well. I'm trying to figure out if this type of shade of green is one that I can see myself wearing. And I want to at least swatch it and see. I didn't bring out any swatch sticks with me. Let's go ahead and start out by just seeing what the base looks like. If this is a uh, sheer-ish, like squishy green. Yeah, it definitely is going to be a squishy green. So this could be one that looks nice as like a topper over a green. So start out with a green cream and then put either one or two coats over it, depending on how opaque you want it and how much glitter you would like. Um, this could be really fun to play around with. Plus it does have those bar glitters that I like and it has purple. So we're gonna keep it at least for the time being. I'm probably gonna have a lot, a lot of comparisons to do here eventually uh, very soon. But that one was Vapid's No Clamshells Needed. Next up, we've got one from Fancy Gloss, also an older label. So I actually do have a label from Fancy Gloss that is this shape. I believe it was one of the first ones from them that I got through a D-stash. This one is called Arctic Breeze. And this is a beautiful mermaidy shade. Look at that. This has a beautiful mix of aqua with green and turquoise. It looks like towards the edge of the bottle, you might get deeper shades of blue depending on the angle and the light. 
This is gorgeous. And I want to say this is not one that I own. So that one was Arctic Breeze from Fancy Gloss going in the collection. Ooh, next up is another one from Colors by Laro, also their older label. This one is called Soccer Mom, and this color is beautiful. So I'm not sure if the dusty quality of this is going to come across very well, but it's sort of that lighter periwinkle blue where it sort of leans towards cornflower. I don't think that tone is really coming through on camera. It's sort of picking up more of the blue than it is that purple pinch, but look at the hollow in this one. This one has the hollow in a larger particle, maybe even a micro glitter. The color on this is definitely what caught my attention and those glitters are going to look beautiful on the nail. And again, this is another one that I don't have, so it's going to go in the collection. I love this kind of color. That is Colors by La Rose Soccer Mom going in the collection. Next up, ooh, we've got our first Never Enough. This is also one of their older labels where they have it written here on the side. This one is called Harmony Hills. This is a green with a larger glass fleck shimmer particle or a micro flaky. This is kind of like a grassy green somewhere along the same lines as the one from Vapid. And again, with this particular shade of green, I'm not 100% sure how I would like it. I usually prefer my greens to be a little bit more on the blue leaning side and I love the ones that are turquoise. It is really beautiful though with that sparkle. You know what though? With this much polish to go through, I am going to try to be as cutthroat as I can be and I think I'm going to put this one in the D-stash. It is beautiful but that shade of green I just don't think I will wear. <sighs> which means I probably should just go ahead and de-stash this one as well. Yeah, I probably should. So I'm moving the Vapid, no clamshells needed, to the de-stash as well as the Never Enough Harmony Hills. Going in the de-stash. Okay, we're just going to make it because, yeah, this is a lot of polish. Okay, next up, we have another Colors by LaRoe. This one is Freedom Isn't Free. This particular shade of green is like a lemon-lime sort of a color. It is a holographic. And I want to say there's also like a shimmer particle in a light gold that catches the light there. This is another kind of a almost, I would say, chartreuse color. I just don't know that I see myself wearing this one. Yeah, look at how bright that is. And it is very yellow leaning. I think this is going to go in the D-stash as well. It's kind of in that like tennis ball, lemon lime sort of coloration. So Colors by Laro, Freedom Isn't Free, going in the D-stash. So far, it's all greens over there. All right, next up, we have another Colors by Laro. This one is called Lethal, and look at the colors in this one. I think I'm going to be saying that for a lot of these. This one is gorgeous. This has a mix of like a multi-chrome micro glitter and a blue micro glitter. Wow, totally freaking my camera out, but beautiful colors. The micro glitters are in a dark blue, but then there's orange and purple and like magenta that is popping up in the like multi-chromatic pigment in there. Willow, we're not going in there, baby bug. This is stunning. I could see this looking beautiful as a topper over other colors because it does seem to be in somewhat of a translucent base. Yeah, definitely in a translucent base there. The shimmer, the shimmer and the sparkles on this are beautiful. So again, not one that I own. That's going in the collection. So that is Colors by Laro Lethal. All right, next up is another Vapid. This one is called Brown Chicken Brown Cow. And I think this is one of their creams. Yeah, it looks like a like chocolate brown or brownie mix brown cream. does need a bit of a shake, but let's take a peek at it on the brush here. There you can sort of see the tone of it. It is really dark. I actually don't have a brown cream, and I think this could be really nice as like an undie underneath other colors like flakies or sheer polishes. So I want to go ahead and add this to the collection. I have been trying to sort of make sure that I have creams in my collection that run the gambit of all of the different colors so that I can layer polishes. So that one is going to go in the collection as well. Brown isn't necessarily my favorite, but I think this could look nice layered. So that is Vapid's Brown Chicken Brown Cow going in the collection. All right, next up we have another Colors by LaRoe. This one is their newer label. This is called Plum Perfect. 
So this one is another one of their amazing holographic formulas. Now, I don't see this as much of a plum color, but let's take a peek at it. Oh, I think this one might have faded because look at on the neck, we've got more of a plum color. But what is left is a beautiful holographic that's more of like a slate blue green. It is beautiful. The hollow is still spectacular. And this is another one that I don't have in my collection. Obviously, as a faded polish, it's not going to be plum perfect anymore. Um, but I can uh, just have this as an oops in my collection. The, the hollow on this is just amazing. So I might have to swatch this one eventually and compare all of my deeper toned hollows and see that I don't have any duplicates or anything. But that is Colors by Laro Plum Perfect going in the collection. Next up, we have a Zoya. This one is called Myrta. This is a very interesting polish, sort of a larger shimmer particle in this red leaning orange base. This is interesting. I don't think I have this one. I do have some older Zoyas that I've gotten in mystery boxes or Goodwill bags. Actually, I also got a container of older mainstream brands from Facebook Marketplace, I want to say last year, that had some older, older Zoyas, but I don't think I have this one. It is one of those colors that is going to be a bit on the sheer side. I can already tell from the bottle, but I really like the shimmer particle size in this. I could see this being kind of a fun summer color. So we're going to add it to the collection to at least play around with and swatch and see. That one is Zoya's Murda going in the collection. Next up, ooh, we've got some from Picture Polish. This one, I believe, is an Australian brand. And this one is called Electric Dream. This is a beautiful shade of pink. There is some gold, larger shimmer particles in there. I want to say there's maybe even some like micro holographic sparkles in there, right there. This is a lovely color of pink. It is in that same range of deeper shades, deeper but brighter shades of pink that I like for summer. I do have quite a lot of them at this point though, so this is one of those color groupings that I will definitely have to do some comparisons of, but I know I don't have this particular polish, and this brand has been on my wish list to get from for quite a while, so we're going to add that to the collection to at least compare to other colors and see if it is unique enough to hold on to, but that one was Picture Polish Electric Dream. All right, next up we have one from Catrice, and this one is called, oh, I'm not familiar with this one. I'm not familiar with where this brand puts their names. There we go, Rusty But Sexy. So this is a beautiful rust color polish. Needs a little bit of a shakeup, but look at this beautiful color. I feel like my camera is lightening this to a more mid-toned yellow leaning orange, but it's definitely in that deeper tone. There's a rust deepness to this that my camera sort of washing out. I love this sort of colors and I actually don't think I have any from Catrice. There we go. It says made in Luxembourg. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any from this company. I want to say I have seen it online from someplace. Actually, I can't think of the company, but in any case, this is one that I don't own. So we're going to put this in the collection to at least compare to my rusty shades of orange. That was Catrice, Rusty But Sexy. Next up, we have another older colors by LaRoe. This is The Way You Make Me Feel. Wow, look at this color. So this one is like a deep slate blue verging onto navy. And then look at everything that's in here. We've got a hollow, beautifully dazzling across the nail and a larger pink shimmer particle. That is beautiful. Another one that I don't have that is going in the collection as well. That is Colors by LaRoe, The Way You Make Me Feel. So far, Colors by LaRoe is in the lead. All right, next up we have one from Square Hue. This is one of the brands that I mentioned when I was doing my little preview that I don't own any. And uh, basically from what I understand seeing other people's videos is they used to have like a subscription box for nail polish, kind of like Julep did. And they had a lot of uh, cream polishes from what I saw, but this one is actually a specialty finish. This one seems to be kind of in the Bordeaux family or maybe a um, maroon. There is some golden orange in there as well, so this probably needs a little bit more of a shake, but this is a beautiful shade and definitely one that I don't have, so we're going to add that to the collection as well. Again, this type of color is one that I'm going to have to do some comparisons of as well, but a beautiful one, and we're going to add that to the collection. So that is Square Hues. I didn't even say the name. Sierra Sunset is the name of that one. 
Next up is another Zoya, this time in their satin line. This one is called Tove, Tove or Tove, T-O-V-E, forward slash satin. I don't know if that's just because they add the satin formula on the backside of the name or not, but this appears to be a light gray. I do have a handful of their satin polishes. I don't know if this is one that I own yet though. It is a beautiful shade of gray just on its own. So if I didn't want to wear this in their satin formula, I could always put a top coat over it, a glossy top coat. Beautiful color too. The tone on this is really nice. So we're going to add that to the collection. Again, with my grays, I'm going to have to do some comparisons as well. And also just double check that this is one that I don't own. But that was Zoya's Tove. I just did a little bit of a rearranging on my polishes over there. Okay, next up we have another older colors by Laro. This is Shimmer Me Timbers. <laughs> this is another beautiful hollow. Look at that. This is in a deep berry shade, obviously loaded with hollow. And I want to say that there might even be a larger glass fleck shimmer particle running throughout this in a berry shade as well. This is another one that I definitely don't have, and it is a beautiful color. So we're going to add that to the collection as well. That's Colors by Laro Shimmer Me Timbers. Next up, ooh, we've got another from Picture Polish. This one is called Instinct, and this one is like a sky blue. It does need a little bit of a shake, but let's see how it looks on the brush here. Yeah, I would say like a, a deep sky blue, saturated sky blue. I have actually been looking for uh, particular shades of this sort of a brighter sky blue for summer, and I'm not sure if this might lean a little bit dustier compared to some other colors that I have. I feel like on camera it's making it seem a lot brighter than it is in person. It's almost more of that like leaning towards duck egg blue. Um, not quite Tiffany box, but really pretty shade. So I will be keeping this one as well. Again, this is another color family that I'm going to have to do some comparisons of here pretty soon, but that one was Picture Polish Instinct. All right, next up we have another older Never Enough Polish. This one is called Gnome on the Range. And this is a really beautiful like slate blue gray. It seems to be in a cream formula, but then there are some shimmers and maybe micro glitters in here. There's also hollow. This is a beautiful shade. I don't think I have anything quite like this. Love their brush, by the way. See that sort of a dusty blue in person. There's that pinch of green in it as well. This is a lovely shade, sort of in early fall color for me. I like this one, so we're going to add that to the collection as well. Um, like I said, with that other gray from Zoya, eventually I'm going to have to swatch and compare a lot of these slaty blue-green gray colors and see if I can get rid of any, but this is a beautiful one and another that I don't have, so that was Never Enough's Gnome on the Range going in the collection. Next up is another one from Colors by Laro. This one is called Oops. And this is another one in that same sort of a color family as, or in the same seemingly formula as Lethal. So we have these mixes of particle sizes and micro glitters, beautiful shifts. I wonder if it's an Oops of Lethal because it's very, very similar, except look at the difference in the shifts. I don't know if that's going to come across very well on camera. Let's do a little flip here. So this one is Lethal. This one is the Oops. I want to say that the shifts in Lethal are different. There's a warmer tone to the Oops. Now, that is just a guess on my part that it's an Oops of this exact polish, but they are very similar in the types of particles that I'm seeing in there but very fun. So I might have to compare those at some point, but this is really, really pretty. This one also has like these uh, micro red specks throughout that are very sparkly and shiny. So we're going to add that one to the collection as well. That is Colors by Laro. Oops. Next one is another CBL. This is a newer one. This one is called Pool Party from summer 2016. Wow. So this is a beautiful like pool green color loaded with hollow. That is beautiful. This kind of green is definitely one that I could see myself wearing. And again, I'm going to have to do some comparisons of this type of color in my collection eventually, but it is a beautiful one and another one that I definitely don't have. So that is Colors by Laro. Pool Parte going in the collection. 
All right, next up we have another CBL. This one is called Did You Know You're My Hero? This is from spring 2016. So same year as that last one, just from the spring line. And this is a beautiful shade of blue. Look at the shimmer on that. You've got shifts from pink to green to gold, all in this gray leading blue polish. This is lovely. So this type of shade is another one that I'm going to have to do some comparisons of, but this is one that I definitely don't have, and it is beautiful. Look at that pink flash. So that is CBL, Did You Know You're My Hero, going in the collection. Next up is another CBL. This one is called One Precious Day Z Cuddle Cots, a charity polish. Interesting. So I don't know if maybe they did a line of charity polishes for swatchers or people or who they might have been for or what they might have been for but this is an interesting color very unique it's got this berry burgundy leaning base and look at the sparkles this one has beautiful twinkles i'm seeing red and gold this is beautiful there's that juicy shade there wow this is lovely I love this one. This is absolutely gorgeous. There you can see the larger gold flecks in there, sort of a micro flaky or a glass flex shimmer particle, as I often call this size of particle. There's also a red like micro glitter that's adding a beautiful twinkle. So definitely going in the collection. This is lovely. That is Colors by LaRoe, One Precious Day C. Ooh, we've got another one from Catrice. This one is called Marilyn and Me. And this one reminds me of, there's an Essie or a China glaze that has to do with ruby slippers. That this is reminding me of, it's like a red jelly with a red micro glitter and a shimmer particle. This is really, really pretty. Um, reds are not my favorite, but ooh, look at this. They've got a nice brush. I like that. Kind of a wide, flat brush. So you can see there you've got the little glitter twinkles on the brush and a beautiful red shimmer. I think I will add this to the collection to at least swatch and compare it to those ones that I'm thinking of, that China Glaze and maybe an Essie that are in the same vein of a polish where you have a red squishy base with a red micro glitter and just see how it compares. But that one was Catrice, Marilyn and Me. Next up, we've got, ooh, we've got a Love Angeline. This one is called Sinking Flora. And this is another brand that does not make polish anymore. I do have a handful of them that I've gotten through either D stashes or other mystery boxes. This one looks to be kind of like a, a turquoisey blue green. Does need a little bit more of a shake, but look at that. You've got this beautiful turquoise color with a load of that larger particled shimmer or glass fleck shimmer particle and a bit of hollow. There it is on the wand. That's a really pretty shade. It's a bit more green leaning than I feel like it's coming across on camera. This is another color that I could definitely see myself reaching for. It is quite beautiful and I love the aqua-y beach vibes that this is giving off. So that one is Love Angeline Sinking Flora going in the collection. Next up is another from CBL. This one is Life in the Fast Lane. Wow, this is another one with micro glitters that twinkles beautifully. This is in a deep, like magenta, almost leaning into a purple. Look at those flashes. That is really beautiful. Let's see how it looks on the neck. That way you can see the tone of this one sort of a mashed berry shade there. And then the twinkles again on the glitter that is used is just beautiful. It twinkles so nicely. This is definitely another one that I could see myself wearing. So we're going to add that to the collection as well. This one is Colors by LaRoe Life in the Fast Lane. Next up, we have ooh, another older Colors by LaRoe. This one is Mystery and Mayhem. Look at that color. So I gave it a bit of a shake. Still needs a little bit more of a shake to get that pigmentation fully dispersed. But look at the beautiful twinkles in this one. It has a larger, like almost micro glitter holographic pigment in there. And then it's all in this deep forest. Mm, 
yeah, like a blue leaning forest green. I think on camera it's coming off as a teal, but it is greener leaning. There you go. I think that's a bit more color accurate, but really beautiful color here. Again, I love this type of forest green. So we're going to add that to the collection as well. This is another color family that I'm going to have to compare once I get my nail polish room up and running, but that is Colors by LaRoe, Mystery and Mayhem going to the collection. And wow, we have a bunch from Colors by LaRoe. That is definitely in the lead for top polish brand from this one. Ooh, we've got one from A England up next. This one is called She Walks in Beauty. So this one is the first one that's a little bit on the dried outside. They did say they tried to pull out as much of the dried ones as possible, but um, dried polish can always be fixed. So I think this one just needs a little bit of, maybe a lot of bit of thinner, but look at the beautiful mix here. It's a mix of like a rose gold with some gold and maybe some silver maybe some white gold, but beautiful combination here. I'll have to see about adding some of my Kiwi Shimmer nail polish thinner to this one and see if I can't get it up and running. But we're going to add that to the collection to at least swatch and see. I want to say I have a couple of polishes in the same idea of a polish where you've got gold mixed with rose gold. So I will have to compare it to those. I want to say it was a Maybelline and a Julep that are in the same color family, but that is A England, She Walks in Beauty, another one that I definitely don't have. All right, next up we have another one from Square Hue. This one is called Deep Space. Ooh, and another specialty finish. I feel like most of the polishes that I saw from them in other people's collections were a lot of times, or at least oftentimes, a cream formula. So I'm surprised happily to see specialty finishes. This is interesting. So they're calling it Deep Space, and I would almost say this is like a deep dark brown. Yes, definitely a brown or a bronze color. There you can see some of the shimmer, hopefully, maybe a little bit. It is a pretty dark color. Maybe we'll see if we can't see it in the bottle. Yeah, in the bottle, you can see it a little bit better right there. That glimmer that's catching the light. I'm seeing it in a gold to orange some deep bronze. This is an interesting color. I'm trying to decide if this is one that I could see myself wearing. Um, it's definitely a beautiful fall color. Like I said, with that vapid, the, uh, what was that called? Brown chicken, brown cow. I don't have that many deep dark browns. I don't know that I've ever actually attempted to wear them. So I want to at least give this one a shot and see how I would like it on. I think this could make a really nice addition to a fall rack. So we're going to add that to the collection to at least give it a shot. That was Square Hues Deep Space. Next up, we've got a Vapid. This one is called Be the Cream. And this one is like a pearl essent white. Look at that. This is actually a type of polish that I had been trying to find for, I want to say last, not last winter, but the winter before. This sort of a pearlized white semi-metallic was definitely one that I wanted to wear for the season. So I do have at least a couple that fall into the same realm. I want to see how this one compares with uh, duplicates like this, if they do run very, very similar as far as how they look. Basically what I try to go by is which formula I like the best or which brand I like the best. And this, I could think of at least one OPI. I don't remember the name of the OPI. And I want to say I might even have a Zoya in this same type of polish. They might not be dupes. We'll have to see at some point, but we're going to add that to the collection to at least swatch and see. That one was Vapid's Be the Cream. And apologies if my voice sounds funny in recording. Hopefully it doesn't sound too bad, but I have been dealing with some pretty bad allergies lately. Next up, we have one from Love Angeline. This one is called Shallow Waters. Ooh, so we have a Crelly with Glitter. Look at that. I love this type of polish. I want to say the first time that I saw or wore a polish like this was from Revlon. Um, I don't remember what that one was called, but it was a dark blue with dark blue glitters. And I loved that on. It was a pain in the rear end to get off, but it was gorgeous. So we will be adding this one to the collection as well. Spoiler, but look at the beautiful glitter mix in here. Instead of just all the dark metallic blue glitters like the Revlon, we've got some holographic. We've got some like almost like pink or lavender there. There's a brighter tone of fuchsia or pink there and probably even more colors. Oh, look at that. We've got a little square lavender one there too. Wow. This is beautiful. I think this could look gorgeous on. This might be the kind of color that would be perfect to wear over a dark cream blue. That way you don't have to use up too much of this 
not available anymore polish, but beautiful one. That is Love Angeline Shallow Waters. Next up, ooh, this one's Rainbow Honey. <gasps> nice. This is another one of those brands that I don't have that many from. If I do have any, it's one or two bottles. And I don't even remember where they were available, but I've heard of them. They're Rainbow Honey Cosmetics. I don't really see like made in or anything like that, but this one is called Celestia. This is a beautiful blue shimmer. This one has like a larger flaky in it as well as a larger glass flex shimmer particle. This is going to be a bit on the sheer side. I can already tell it seems to be in a clear base, but look at all the twinkles. Oh my goodness. This is beautiful. This type of blue you guessed it, it's another one that I'm going to have to do some serious comparisons of because I have a lot of polishes that fall into this realm. Every time you put a shimmer, flaky sparkle into a blue like this, it always gets me. I just love it. Um, while purple is probably still my number one pick as far as a favorite color, this type of polish always gets me. It ranges in color from like a a deeper cerulean blue to this more mid-tone blue to a lighter blue. So we'll have to do lots of comparisons for those, but I don't have this one yet. So we're going to add it to the collection. That is Rainbow Honey Cosmetics Celestia. And I'm actually not sure on that one if it falls into the indie realm or if it is a mainstream. Let me know if you know. Okay, next up is another CBL. This one is Ain't Nobody Leaving Till We Sing the Blues. This one needs a bit of a shake so I can see what the base is, but I love the color I'm seeing so far. Oh yeah, look at that. This is like an indigo. It's beautiful. It appears to be a cream polish. I love colors like this where they blur the line between a blue and a purple. Uh, I could see this easily shifting depending on the lighting. Now it's not the same as a, a multi-chromatic shift or a flaky shift, it's just the type of color that changes uh, based on how your eyes are interpreting the color based on the lighting. So there it is on the wand. This is beautiful. It seems like it might be a bit on the squishy side for a cream formula, but I think for this color, this would look beautiful. We're adding that to the collection as well. So that is CBL's Ain't Nobody Leaving Till We Sing the Blues. That makes 17 CBLs so far. Wow. All right, next up. Ooh, look at this one. This is another from Love Angeline. Now, also a different label. The other two that we've unboxed had what I'm assuming was the older label. This one might have been the one that they went to later on. And this one is called Freeze. This is stunning. Look at that hollow again. This is a beautiful like blush shade of pink. Again, jam-packed full of hollow. There's also a larger particle in there that I can't quite tell if that is like an iridescent particle or another hollow, but it is gorgeous. I love this shade of pink. It is one of my favorite tones, one that I've liked the longest. The brighter shades of pinks are definitely ones that I are, are fairly new to my like, as in within the last couple of years, but this is another one that I know I don't have, so we're adding this to the collection for sure. That is Love Angeline Freeze. All right, next up, ooh, next up is that other NFUO, this time in a silver. This one is called number 61, and this is a silver holographic. Just to compare it to the pink, the pink actually seems to have a different type of hollow, much more linear, whereas the one that is silver, at least right now, doesn't seem to be that linear. Yeah, not as linear, but it's maybe not meant to be. Maybe it's more of a silver with a subtle bit of hollow. But in any case, it's another one that I don't have. Uh, maybe what I'll do is add this to my silver holographic comparisons to see how it compares to the other silver hollows that I have in my collection. But that is NFUO's number 61. I will say what I forgot about sitting cross-legged to do these on the floor is my legs go to sleep. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to figure out a different way of doing this. Uh, in any case, the next one is from Vapid. This one is called <gasps> Ishtar. <gasps> oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so this, this is one that you probably saw on my spring rack. I have a mini bottle of this and I was just saying when I did that spring video that I would love a full-size bottle. Well, here it is. <laughs> I'm so excited I have a full-size bottle of this now. So this is a beautiful shade of pink, especially for spring. And what I love about this one is hopefully you can see it on camera. There are these little speckles of pigment in there. 
it looks so adorable when it's on the nail. So yay! I did not think that that would be possible, but now I have a full-size bottle. So that is Vapid's Ishtar. I am so excited about that. Next up, I mean, I mean, I was excited about quite a lot of these, but that one was actually one I had on my wish list. Okay, next up, we have another from CBL. This one is called Humility. Ooh, this was a Rainbow Connection exclusive. So Rainbow Connection is a, I believe, a UK distributor of indie nail polish, and they often have exclusives, and they're harder to come by mainly for us here in the States because shipping is pretty expensive. But look at this color. It is another beautiful purple holographic, and look at the flakies in there. That is coming across as a beautiful teal to blue. In person, from my angle back here, I'm not really seeing them all that much. So they're going to be one of those components that is going to shift beautifully depending on the lighting, depending on the angle. Just the purple alone, though, on this is absolutely stunning. As I said before, with the other purple holographic, which was, I think, one of the first ones that we unboxed. I cannot get enough of these purple holographics, and these are two very different purples. We have a juicier tone in Humility and more of a dusty tone in My Big Girl Panties. So two different formulas all together, but beautiful nonetheless. I absolutely love the addition of the flakies and this juicy tone. So this is definitely going in the collection and also really excited to add a Rainbow Connection exclusive to my collection. So that one was Humility by CBL. Next up, we have another one from Square Hue. This one is called Lake Louise. Oh, maybe that's the like release date. So would that be January 2016 would be my guess. Let's see, what do the other ones say? Well, that can't be right. 1985. There's no way these are from 1985 and 1988. I don't think. <laughs> uh, but in any case, I think that might be the release date. I could be wrong. If you subscribe to these and you know what those meant, definitely let me know. But this is an interesting, I was going to say just like a sky blue, but I think it might be like a pearl essent light blue. Yeah, there's like a pearl finish to this. That's interesting. Huh. So I was saying when I unboxed the pearlescent one from Vapid that I'd been looking for a pearl white. I don't know how I feel about a pearl blue, like in this particular shade of light blue. I want to give it a shot though, because sometimes you can surprise yourself. Um, it might be one I like, it might not be, but we'll, we'll see. I'm going to give it a shot. I think it could be one of those ones that surprises me when, if I try it on. But that was Square Hue Lake Louise. Next up, we have another from Zoya. This one is called Bobby. And this is another one that I'm fairly certain I don't own. This one is a like pink leaning red. There's again, a larger shimmer particle in here maybe a little bit of a silver speckle as well. This is really a pretty color. I want to say maybe I'm wrong about the red lean. I mean, there's red-ish hues, but by comparison to the Catrice, which is definitely a red, you can see that pink lean. Yeah, I want to at least swatch this one and see how I might like it on. I think I could really like this as well. It's sort of a redder version of some of those deeper pinks that I really, really like for summer. And I think it's one that I don't have as well. So we're going to add that to the collection to at least swatch and compare. So that is Zoya's Bobby. Next up, we've got one from OPI. This one is called, I think, In Pink. And it looks like this was part of their Breast Cancer Awareness Collection. This is a beautiful light shade of pink. I, again, I think on camera, it's kind of washing it out. There's more of a pink hue to it than what's coming across on camera. But let's go ahead. Whoops. That specialty wrap is not printed on. It's just a little like a plastic overlay. Oh, this is cute. Look at that. It's a little squishy pink. I like this one. All right. So uh, this is kind of a surprise because I was not, uh, not thinking this would be one that I end up keeping, but I like it. I think this kind of a color could look really sweet in spring. It could also be really nice for layering, maybe doing pond manis, but I want to at least hold on to this for the time being to do some comparisons of in my collection with these sheerer pinks that I have. If I have any, I want to say in one of the last Goodwill hauls that I had, I did end up with some 
OPI and maybe even an Orly that's in a sheerer pink. So comparing those would be a good thing to see not only how they compare, but which one I might like best or be more inclined to wear if I'm reaching for a sheer pink, because sheer pinks are definitely one of those color categories that I don't necessarily need a lot of, but this is a really sweet one. I really like how it looks on the brush. So that one is OPI's, I think, in pink. Next up, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so this is an older girly bits. You guys, in the bottle, this is spectacular. This is called Shift Happens. I think this might be a UP polish, you guys. Look at that. So it's got a little bit of a but the uh, dried up polish ended up popping right off of the cap. So it's moving around beautifully in here. But look at the shifts in here. I, if you know if this is a UP polish, definitely let me know. Uh, once I go to try to add this to my um, nail polish rack, it would probably say, but wow, look at the, look at that shimmer. You have this sort of a light purple base. Oh, it, this is definitely UP. I'm, I'm pretty certain this is UP. If it's not UP, it is a UP sibling pigment, but you've got that red to green to gold classic UP all in a very squishy base that has a purple hint to it. This is dazzling. This is definitely one that you would want to wear over a color or just for a very ethereal clear look on your nails. But look at that. Look at that twinkle. Oh my gosh. Wow. So Girly Bits is still in business. They do make polish. In fact, recently they did a, not quite a rebranding, but they basically did a restructuring of their business. They are a Canadian company and they had been kind of like Rainbow Connection where you could buy multiple brands from them. But what that meant for her at the maker is after some time, she didn't really have time to do her own collections anymore. So she recently sort of separated the two and now it is like Gracie and Jay I think is the new Canadian stockist company and Girly Bits the website is now just for her own collections and I think she just released a new collection as well I need to go check that out not that I need more polish <laughs> ah, but in any case this is beautiful. This is one of her older polishes. I am jazzed about this one as well. This is exciting to see an older polish especially one that might be what I'm thinking is a UP pigment. And if you are not familiar with what a UP pigment is, basically what that is, is unicorn P. And that is in reference to the kind of shimmer that is in this. It is a specialty pigment that I guess was initially made for like car paint jobs. And it really took off in popularity in nail polish. And it is harder to come by because it isn't made anymore from what I understand. They do make unicorn P siblings. So it's a similar like size particles, or I'm not sure actually what the technical stance is on what makes it a UP sibling or not, but that's what UP is. It's a very specialty, beautiful shifting shimmer. And oftentimes it ended up being in a clearer base like this because you can easily drown out the delicate pigment that it is if you put too much opacity in your base. So in any case, just a little thing about UP, if that is indeed what this one is, but moving on, that is girly bits shift happens going in the collection. Next up, this video is already a lot longer. Hopefully I can edit it down, but this is another one from Catrice called Captain Sparrow's Boat. Ooh, so we have a Pirates of the Caribbean polish. So this one appears to be like a moody gray shimmer. Let's take a peek at it on the brush. Look at that. So in the bottle, I'm not super excited about the color necessarily, but I want to give this a shot. I want to at least swatch it and see. There's like a little bit of like a green shimmer that I'm seeing at certain angles that I think could look absolutely gorgeous on. And since I don't have any from Catrice yet, this is one that I'm fairly certain I don't own. I think I would remember the name as well. So that is Captain Sparrow's Boat by Catrice going in the collection. All right, next up we have another from CBL. This one is called BAM from summer 2016. Another hollow. Wow. The hollows from this brand are just amazing. This kind of falls into the same, again, realm as my my big girl panties as far as like how the hollow looks. I mean, just dazzling, but I want to say we did run across a summer 2016 polish. Here we go. Summer 2016. That one was pool party. So they are actually kind of in the same family of colors, 
by comparison, Pool Party is a little bit lighter, whereas Bam is a little bit darker. I'll have to see how they compare on the nail once they're swatched and make sure that BAM is different enough that I don't feel that they look the same on the nail, especially since these are older polishes and sometimes the pigment may have faded like that one, which was like plum perfect, but beautiful color. This is still a color that I could definitely see myself wearing. It is a beautiful shade of green. And again, the hollow is amazing. So we're gonna add that to the collection at least till I can do some comparisons. So that was CBL's BAM. Next up, we've got, we've got one from Zoya. This one is called Aurora. All right. This one I want to say might be the first one that I do already own. Um, if I don't, it was on my wish list. So either way, I do have to double check and see if I ended up grabbing it or not. I know I had quite a lot of these larger holographic particled polishes from Zoya on my wish list. This is a beautiful one. Again, in that sort of a berry shade as what was that other one? Maybe the CBL which was Life in the Fast Lane. So similar color category, beautiful color. Another one of those colors that I really enjoy. And of course, I love this formula from Zoya. I think it is just beautiful. So we're gonna put this in the pile of ones I need to check on. I actually think this might be the first one that I need to check on. Obviously not the ones I need to do comparisons of, but the ones I need to check on to see if I own or not. But that one was Zoya's Aurora. Next up, we have another older Never Enough. Very nice. This one is called Dream Springs. This is gorgeous. This is a beautiful shade of blue. This is another brand that actually does not make polish anymore. And another one that I somehow completely missed their closure announcement. i um, very bummed about that because this was one of my favorite brands, but this is a really lovely tone. It's kind of a mix between like a cobalt blue and a purple and it has a lot of shimmer components in there, so lots of twinkles. This is another gorgeous color and one that I, again, know I don't have, so we're gonna add that to the collection as well. Look at the shifts on there. You can see a little bit of pink, some green and gold. That one's going in the collection as well, so that's never enough Dream Springs. Next up, we've got, ooh, Shimmer from Vapid. This one is called Defiant. This is a beautiful green. Look at that. This is stunning. The shimmer, again, is just beautifully dazzling. I love the little unicorn stickers that they have. You can see the base there is clear. So you're going to have just the, sh uh, the shimmer that's making up the color of the base. I'm seeing shifts to gray and purple, green and aqua. This is gorgeous. And it's another one that I'm fairly certain I don't own either. So we're going to add that to the collection. That was Vapid's Defiant. Ooh, look at the shifts there. Wow. All right. We might have to break this up into two sections because this is already over an hour, almost an hour 15 in filming. I, I know I can edit some of that down, but I don't know how much. Uh, all right. Next up, we've got another from Vapid. Oh my gosh, this is stunning. This one is called A Little Madness. This one is stunning. Look at that. So contrast is one of those things that I love to see. It always catches my eye. This is in a beautiful like purple leaning blue blackened base. I think on camera you're catching the blue flash that's on the face of the bottle at certain angles. But then look at those red flakies in here. They are predominantly a red, but I am seeing some that shift to gold and green. This is amazing. Wow. Let's see it on the brush here. Look at that. That is amazing. I think this kind of has a somewhat sheer-ish base. It definitely doesn't have a cream component to it. So this could be one that looks really nice over other colors or as just a, a way of saving the polish since I'm sure this is one that's not available anymore. Um, definitely adding this one to my collection. This is gorgeous. That one is Vapid's A Little Madness and that is 54 polishes for part one. I think that's where we're gonna cut this one off. I'll come back, well, for me in like two minutes. <laughs> But for you in a couple of days, we'll go through the rest of this in part number two. Um, like I said at the beginning, this is going to be a very lengthy process because we have over 2000 polishes. So if we do, well, let's see, I think I did the math at 100 bottles, which would be 200 videos. So if I'm only doing about 50 for about an hour long video, we are talking 400 videos. Yeah, in any case, <laughs> there we go, part one. 
part one of our very large, what I'm calling an estate Facebook marketplace find. Hopefully you guys had fun looking at some older polishes. I know this was a blast. I ended up with at least one polish that had been on my lemming list. So really excited about that. Um, if you're new, definitely make sure to hit the little subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of this type of content here for this haul especially. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. I will see you in that next one.